You guys, my dream of writing a book has finally come true and I cannot be more excited. To be able to hold my book, to see it in print, just seems so surreal. Hey everybody, we're in Costco. We are going to see Crystal's book that she wrote because we heard it was here. There we go. You see it? Ah, oh, there it is, Crystal. So cool. This is exciting, an exciting moment. Yeah, no kidding. I visualize this moment like every day for the past year. Yeah. I'm seeing it in costume. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you should just stand here and sign copies for people. <laughs> well, if you want me to start hawking them for you, I, I can do it. Hey, he wants one. <laughs> I want to thank all of you. So many of you have supported me and encouraged me. About 10 years ago is when I actually did a blog post about my goal to write a book and it was actually a really scary thing to do because I felt so insecure and inadequate, ill-equipped. I don't have a PhD or a fancy Ivy League education but one thing I do have is a story and that is what this is. This is my journey in discovering more of who I am and what has been holding me back all these years. I want to read the introduction of this book to give you a little idea of what this book is about. Let's address the elephant in the room, shall we? I'm not always balanced. In fact, I'm really good at not being balanced. In my quest for the cure-all idea of balance, I unwittingly opened the floodgates of personal development. I came face to face with the lies I had created in my mind over years of suppressing my true self, my inner being, my soul. I found myself experiencing a full-on identity crisis. Yes, the cliché midlife crisis that inevitably happens to the ones you least expect. The ones who on the outside look as though they have it all together. The truth is, I was falling apart internally. Who am I really? Was a question I could not quite answer. Am I living up to my potential? Am I loving with all my heart? Why am I so jealous, needy, and insecure? Why do I always feel so emotionally unstable? Perhaps I need medical attention, or maybe I'm just craving attention. Analyzing my motives behind everything I've ever done, tracing it back to the core, I discovered something I wasn't too proud of. I unveiled my deep desire to be popular, admired, famous even. I was desperate for approval, not realizing the betrayal I bestowed upon myself in an attempt to gain praise and recognition. I had been sacrificing the true part of me in pursuit of adoration and self-worth. It was time for some soul-searching. Being a well-rounded person has always been a goal of mine. I remember that even as a young girl, I would make to-do lists that always incorporated mind, body, and soul. Read a book. Check. Ride my bike around the block ten times. Check. Surprise my mom by cleaning the house for her. Check. It gave me a sense of accomplishment and pride as I checked off each task, feeling as though I had cracked the code to life. Oh, to be a naive 10-year-old again. Now, fast forward to my life as a mom of four pushing 40, I've realized just how far I've come in my quest for balance. We all want to be balanced, right? But being balanced is like being perfect. Ain't no mom got time for that. I spent most of my motherhood years checking things off my list as if life were a mathematical equation. Mind plus body plus soul equals balance. If I do A, B, and C, then I'll be the perfectly balanced mom. I would start my day with a prayer, read something inspirational, get on the treadmill, drink a protein shake, spend a little time developing a talent like learning the guitar, clean the house, play with my kids, make dinner, clean up, do laundry, bathe the kids, read them books, and then kiss them goodnight. Day after day after day, I would follow this simple mechanical formula. I thought I would feel complete and balanced, like I was doing everything God has asked of me. Instead, my checked off tasks felt completely futile and mundane. There was no passion or excitement. I needed a challenge, a purpose, a why. 
Let's be honest, the daily duties of a mother can seem quite monotonous at times. You cook, you clean, and you care for your child's every need. At the end of the day, you're feeling physically exhausted and at the same time, craving something more. I didn't realize that my quest for feeling balanced and at peace would take much more than just mindlessly doing clear-cut tasks. It would take a lot more effort and brain power to get to where I wanted to be. The meaning of balance to me has changed substantially over the past decade. It has become more of a state of mind and less about my daily tasks. I finally discovered the missing link. The problem was that I didn't quite grasp the mind slice of balance. Now I understand that balance actually starts with the mind. A healthy mind breeds a healthy body and spirit. I'm completely fascinated with how the mind works. The evolution of the brain, why we do what we do, the brain default settings, memory, decision making, motivation, emotions, habits, neurotransmitters and all things meditation, manifestation, and law of attraction. When I was 21, I served an 18-month Christian mission in Germany. I spent two months in a training center to help me learn the language and to pre prepare me for the work ahead. I remember looking up at the beautiful Provo Mountains each morning as my partner and I walked to the cafeteria for breakfast. I once said to my partner, look how foggy the mountains are. She seemed confused and informed me that the mountains were in fact beautifully crisp. It was at that moment that I realized I needed glasses. I had been going about my life not even knowing my vision was blurry. The next day I got glasses and instantly gained a different perspective. I could now see everything with a newfound sharpness. As I've spent time studying the mind and doing the work required on my own brain, I've been able to operate more from positive emotions as opposed to the regular negative emotions that seem to cloud my perception. Suddenly I see things much more clearly. I understand now what was keeping me from feeling my best physically and being truly centered and connected to God. I realized that by feeding the negative emotions and believing the thoughts that were creating the emotions, I unintentionally constructed a barrier between God and me. God speaks to us through our spirits and when our minds, egos, are controlling the show, our spirits get stuck backstage hiding their gifts and talents from the audience. It's amazing how a healthy mind can provide the focus needed to be led by your intuition as you work toward achieving goals. Just five years ago, I wondered why I always seemed to have so much drama in my life. Why did so many negative emotions seem to fester within my soul? Resentment, jealousy, anger, boredom, discouragement, and shame seemed to be my constant companions. I thought, I'm a nice person and a loyal friend. I take good care of my kids and I do the right thing. How could any of these feelings be my fault? Everything seemed foggy. I believed others were making me feel the way I was feeling. I would get frustrated with people's lack of love and appreciation toward me. How could they do this, I thought. When I finally put on my proverbial glasses, I began to see that my very own thoughts were the problem all along. I get to choose how I want to feel. When someone does something that hurts my feelings, it only hurts because of what I make it mean. This piece of knowledge has literally set me free from all the internal torment I was experiencing. In this book, I will go into more detail and share personal experiences about times when I was overcome with resentment, jealousy, stress, and confusion. I've discovered the perfect remedy for every negative emotion and experience we are faced with in motherhood, and I'm looking forward to sharing it through my own personal story. Thank you guys so much for being so supportive and Follow me on this journey, this 10 year journey of mine since I began my blog. I would love to have your help in spreading the word about my book and in an effort to do so, I thought it would be awesome to have a little giveaway contest. For those of you who are reading my book, who have purchased my book, I would love to send out a prize, a beautiful Jujube backpack. I love this backpack so much. It could be used as luggage or diaper bag, whatever you like, beach bag. But I thought a contest would be so much fun. If you post a picture of you holding my book on social media, tag me at wannabe balanced and use the hashtag wannabe balanced, you will be entered in the drawing to win 
this jujube bag and I'll also throw in some extra little goodies inside the bag. A signed copy of my book, one of my wannabe balanced elephant rocks, and some crystals, some other little surprises I'll throw in there for you. But I would just love your support in spreading the word about my book. So post a picture of you holding your book, use the hashtag, tag me, and I will announce a winner in about a week. And I'll keep you all posted on social media of who the winner is. You can find my book at Costco, Deseret Book, Amazon, BarnesandNoble.com, Target.com, Walmart.com, and various other bookstores throughout the U.S. So thank you again, you guys, for supporting me. Thank you for those of you who have already purchased my book and who read it. I would appreciate reviews on Amazon. It means so very much to me to have you guys supporting me in this endeavor that has taken me over a decade to to actually make it happen. So I just love you guys so much and I appreciate I just appreciate you guys so much. So thank you. Thank you.